All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's time for the Tech Talk show this afternoon. Uh, we apologize that today's episode of the show uh, is not live uh, due to uh, technology each uh, that uh, we are having presently today. But today on the show, we're going to be talking about creating Azure Logic Hub. Uh, so Azure Logic Hub is a core enabler for serverless computing. And uh, we're going to be learning today's topic with Mark Allen. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mark, and welcome on the show. Hi, uh, Kazim. How are you doing? <laughs> very well, very well. Apart from the technical uh, issues. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Mark, uh, let's meet you. Who is Mark Allen? Um, well, Mark has been a lot of things over his life. Um, basically, I started started as a developer on a mainframe back in the 1970s. I started to build stuff and discovered I enjoyed it. And I've been building stuff ever since then in one form or another. Um, these days, I'm also an Azure MVP. Um, basically, I came through the Microsoft route. So I started off in MS-DOS you know, when that came along and then in Windows version one. And you know, I followed through the, the Microsoft technology path. And then when Azure came along, that solved some problems that I was having. Um, so I started using Azure quite a lot as part of my development work. And so I'm now an Azure MVP, but basically a developer. So you know, not the infrastructure sort of Azure person that you might immediately think of when you hear Azure. So. Um, and I live these days in Northern Ireland, so up, up, up and left a bit from where you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, very well then, uh, Alan. So uh, let's move to, let's get started now. Uh, I know Azure Logic App is a serverless uh, app, right? Uh, but, but, but let's start with serverless technology now. What makes up a serverless technology? And why is serverless technology important? Right. Um, well, the core of why it's important is that it allows you to make use of the cloud as the cloud and not just as a data center, not just as somebody else's computer. Um, yeah. it, in fact, you know, the name serverless implies it's not any, not even a computer at all, which is a slight lie. But um, but what server? I mean, serverless initially started as being a name for what was you know functions as a service. So AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, Google Cloud Functions. Um, but these days, it's being rolled up to anything which essentially allows you to get as much scale as you need to do what you need. Um, so it will scale down to zero and up to infinity in theory if it's being properly serverless. And more importantly you're only paying for the amount of use you make of it. So if you set up a serverless solution and nobody is using it, you will pay nothing for that. Um, if all of a sudden you know you get onto the front page of Hacker News or something like that, everybody piles in and starts using your service, it will all yeah. scale up, it will take the traffic, and you will pay just you will then start paying for the amount of traffic that happens and then when everybody when, when the rush dies down again then the yeah. cost also dies down as well and yeah. it's usually a lot more efficient than just a vm based pricing or an instance based pricing yeah. so you know that that's serverless in general and that doesn't have to be just compute i mean azure sql has a serverless tier these days cosmos okay. is starting to get into you know, having a serverless pricing model and auto scaling pricing model. So, so yeah, that that's really why why you would want to use serverless is just you know, you write the code, you throw the data at it, and then it handles all the scaling and the pricing for you. Okay, okay, a uh, very good response. Uh, so uh, another question is this: I know there are a number of serverless apps up on Azure, right? Uh, so so we've got. Uh, the Azure functions, uh, the, there's the events grid, and then there is the Logic App as well. So where exactly does Logic App fit in, uh, in the rank of the available serverless apps that we have on Azure? And and what uh, can uh, Azure Logic Apps really help us with? 
Um, well, Logic Apps is part of what they refer to as the integration section of Azure. So, you know, if you look in, in the Azure portal or on the Azure website, you know, you'll see the products are all split down and there's one there called integration. Um, so essentially, what, and, and that includes things like Event Grid, Event Hub, you know, Service Bus as well. So it's yeah. it's kind of acting as glue between other things as much as anything. So, so Azure Functions is very much, you know, you, you write the code, you give the code to Azure Functions, and Azure Functions runs your code. And it has a certain number of bindings and things to allow it to talk to other things. But for the most part, you're writing the code that runs there. Logic Apps is more of a workflow and glue sort of thing. So where it's really good is at defining a workflow, at connecting to third party systems. So, you know, if you want to connect to secure FTP, for instance, it can do that without you having to do anything. Okay. And but the other thing it can do then is you can bring in Azure Functions as a part of your workflow. So I don't know what you know, I mean, logic. If you've seen Power Automate and Power Automate flows, Logic yeah. Apps is just you know the developer version of Power Automate. But it, what it yeah. does give you that ability to do is to define your flows in code and also then to call out to Azure Functions or other APIs or things that you might have written, so that you can wrap all the good stuff that Logic Apps gives you for free or for easy and then wrap that round to connect it to your code so that you're just writing the core logic and you know, then building that you know getting getting all getting all the you know, all the logic apps goodness for free <laughs> essentially okay 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 so uh for for those uh people that might be watching this at a later time now who are not developers themselves uh that you know showing interest in this technology what would you say is an example of a manual process now that we can easily automate uh, with an app like Logic App? Um, oh, there's all sorts of things. I mean, I, I started off, you know, doing things like, you know, when you know, it, it's all very event driven. So, you know, the, the thing that starts a Logic App is something happening. And okay. that can be all sorts of things, you know, you know, any of the connectors that have a, has, a, has a trigger that will start your logic app. So it can be something very simple, like you actually, you know, making an HTTP call. So, you know, typing an address into a web browser and that starts it. But it can also be things like monitoring for a tweet. So, you know, you okay. can say whenever a tweet that matches this happens okay. to do something or go and check an RSS feed. And when there's a new item from the RSS feed or when my you know when, when my email system you know a new email arrives do something with that um or in your you know if you've got sap or something like that you can integrate with sap so thing, things that happen like that you can then define a workflow so you can then look at what it was that came in what it was that happened that caused your logic app to wake up do some analysis, okay. maybe a little bit of control flow on that. And then at the other end, you can just say, well, either send an email based on that or send a tweet back. You know, so you could set up a, a little tweet bot to reply to tweets coming in. Or, you know, you can actually go off and fire off, you know, and drop things into databases. You know, so, you know, I, I, I've done things like, you know, when, when, when you get something in an RSS feed, send me an email. Um, I done one where you it watches a web page for you and if something changes in the web page it goes and checks that to see if it's an important change and if so lets me know um, okay. and another one I, 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 I've got running at the moment is just a timed thing so every day it calls some of my code to do something and then once that's done it can then take the output from that and use a use an SF you know, send it to an SFTP server so okay. Oh, okay, um, so would you say from your experience, uh, are there scenarios where we can have Azure Logic App function independently on its own without uh, the need to combine it with other serverless technology now? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, Logic Apps, like I say, is, is a version of Power Automate. So anything you can do with Power Automate, which is you know, pure end user thing, yeah. 
in front of the Power Platform. You can also do in Logic Apps and all the workflow. If you were doing a you know a traditional serverless workflow with Azure Functions and Event Grid, you know you'd have to hook all that up yourself. But the workflow yeah. in Logic Apps, that's all happening under the covers. So you, all you have to define is that this happens and then this happens and this happens and make a decision that either this thing happens or this thing happens and repeat this bit you know so many times depending on you know for, for each thing that was in the original data packet or something like that um, yeah. but you can define all that without having to write any code or use any of the underlying integration technologies you know you just define the workflow and say when this happens do all this stuff okay 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 so um th th this brings me to the next one now now we we live in an API centric, uh, you know, world. Uh, yes, the, the the ability that API gives us now is excellent, but but sometimes writing the code that we talk to this API can be, you know, sometimes challenging, can be tasking, yeah. right? Yeah. So how does Azure Logic Hub help, you know, the developers now in this regard? Um, well, you probably wouldn't write an entire API using Logic Apps, but you know, one of the things, like I said, that can trigger a Logic App is an HTTP call. So it's entirely yeah. possible if you've got an endpoint, you know, if you if you've got something that wants to call the Logic App from code, yeah. you can define a simple endpoint. Um, you know, the you know the Logic App will give you an address. You can tell your code to call that call that address with whatever information you know, so a normal GET or POST request, and then in the Logic App you can then process that. Um, and again, you can do that with code or without. Now you you'll have certain things. You know, there's no built-in security around that, for instance. So if you're used to building an ASP.NET API with authentication and stuff, you won't get that out of a Logic App. But if you just want to build a simple API that you know you fire in a request and it returns you a response and you don't mind who calls that or at least you know if you don't mind in implementing your own checks on the security then you know you can certainly set up simple endpoints like that using a logic app okay okay uh, um so would you also say that the azure logic app is created for small tasks or can we also use it for mission critical tasks also um yeah in terms of small um i yeah i wouldn't make it too complicated because it is all in a one screen work you know graphical workflow most of the times um so yeah there's there's a certain level beyond which it gets a little unwieldy um but you know the whole point of the serverless side of things and the fact that the infrastructure, you, know, you don't have to worry about that. All that infrastructure lying and sitting under there is bulletproof. So if you if you ask a logic app to do something, it will do that thing. I mean, you know, you can define for each step, you know, how many retries you need, you know, if something is going wrong elsewhere. But, you know, the logic app itself will be up, it will be running, it will complete your workflow in whatever way you need to do it. So yes, you know, it's an, it's perfectly sensible place to put in mission critical workflows. So, you know, for instance, okay. if you've got an invoice system and you know that absolutely must email out PDFs of each invoice, you know, you can rely on logic apps to pick up those invoices and send okay. those emails as long as nothing else isn't the logic app goes wrong in between. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, so, how about um, uh, for developers now? Can a developer bring his or her code into Logic App? Um, yeah, that's where the integration with Azure Functions and stuff would come in. So, you know, Logic Apps itself doesn't have much in the way of code. Um, it yeah. has simple functions. So you know, imagine, you know, imagine you're writing an Excel macro or something like that. It can do that sort of level of code. Um, okay. But if you want to bring in your own code, you can either just create an Azure function and you know, just drop an Azure function step, or you can create your own API endpoint and get Logic Apps to call that endpoint and you know, get you know, call your code that way. So you know, okay. it won't be within the Logic App as such, but it's very easy to integrate your own APIs into a Logic App. 
Okay, okay. So uh, I'm sure uh, you know I've learned a lot uh, myself now. But but is there something you can walk us through, more like a quick demo uh, that you can help us use connect the dots with some of those things you've been saying? Uh, um, yeah, I can see if I can find something here. It's, uh, if you like. Um, no, I'll need to. I'll need to share my screen, won't I? Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So, can you see that? That's yes, it is browsing. visible. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Just as a quick example, you know, th this is you know for 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 normal Azure functions. So, this is the Azure function triggers and bindings, and you can see mm -hmm. the, these are the things that you know a normal Azure function can connect to. So, you know, you can find something when something when a blob's created in blob storage, or when you get an HTTP call, or when you get a message on service bus. Um, that's the sort of things that Azure Functions can talk to natively. Um, okay. But if we take it up to the Logic Apps level, or indeed the Power Automate level, you know, you can see here that you know these connectors work in both. You yeah. can see just how many different things we can connect to here. So we can connect to all sorts of things you've never heard of. You know, you can connect to data data enrichment. You can connect to DocuSign, which you probably have heard of. So, you know, if I go into DocuSign here, you can see we can trigger a flow when the status of a you know a DocuSign envelope changes. Yeah. And once that's doing, then we can do things like add a recipient or send send an envelope. Um, and you know, so so we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things in here and that that's you know that's the difference you know that's what logic apps is for this you know this gives you connections to all the things you know so, so you don't have to write any of this code um, okay. and you know I'll, I'll show you how easy it is to do something like that so if I go okay so if I, if I go, off to, go, go off to the portal here It's going to let us sign in. Good. So, <laughs> so yeah, you know, here's the add new thing in in Azure. Um, and like I say, it, it, Logic Apps is part of integration. So, you know, it's you know the mo most popular Logic App integration thing. Uh, well, just while I'm here, I'll just point that out there. There's a Logic Apps custom connector. So, if if for some reason you can't find your system in those hundreds of connectors, you can actually build your own for your own system if you really custom want. Custom connector. Okay. But you know, if I hit new logic app, put it in a resource group, and we'll call it tech. And I'll just create that. We'll usually provision pretty quickly. Yep, there it goes. And that will drop us straight in at the Logic App Designer. So you know, we've got the usual stuff over here, but you know, the, okay. you know yeah, drops you in at the drops you in at the designer here. So you can see, you know, it you know, it gives us a nice easy starter screen here. So you can see some of the more common things you want here. So if I wanted to start with when a new tweet is posted, I can do that. Or down here, there's various templates for you know ready-made stuff. So you know, I'll go, you know, let's talk about it. so you'll mail yourself new tweets about a certain keyword via Outlook. Or send me an email when a new item is added to a SharePoint online list. So you know that this gives you an idea of the you know some of the yeah. things that you can do with logic apps. When I when a new member is added to a MailChimp list, ask me if I want to want, ask, ask me if I also want to add them to a SharePoint list. So a lot of things you can get there just straight off. Or you know, if we just go in at the at the core level here, so you can see what a blank logic app looks like. You know, the first thing when you drop in to a logic app is, like I say, that trigger. So, what is it that you want to ha to happen? Um, what 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 is it that you know, you want to start a run on the logic app? Um, so, yeah, if I go back to that RSS one that I was talking about, you know, if I go to Stack Overflow. And I'll search for. So there's a there's a tag there for for logic apps, and if I whiz down the bottom here, you can see there's a an RSS feed for that. So okay. I can copy that. Um, 
So you know, here's all the different triggers we can use, but you know, I can use the RSS one there. And I just want to say when a feed item is published on that on that RSS feed, and that will start my logic app. Now it's this is a you know a lot of these connectors are polling, so you know it's you know it you know it's going to go off and check that RSS feed every three minutes and see if there's any new items. Now, obviously, if I was writing this myself in, in pure code, I'd have to write a timer. I'd have to save the previous state of the of the RSS feed. I'd have to have an RSS feed parser. All that is done for me. Yeah. You know, so all this you know you know all I have to do is type in the URL there and. Everything that I put in here will just happen when when a new thing appears in that in that RSS feed, and I haven't had to do anything special. So once once that's done, then I can choose an action here. So I can send myself an email. So you know, there's a, all the actions here that I can do with my Outlook account. So yeah, I just want to send myself an email here. I can hit that. Um, I send that to me. And then you'll see here we've got this thing called dynamic content. So what this means is that anything that's happened further up in the flow, I can now refer to. So when that feed item was published, that connector, you know, defined its output as an RSS feed item. So down here goes in as my subject. You know, I could also. Can do something like that and say stack overflow type of my feed title in the body there. I'll so I can't get the summary item of that, of that RSS in there. Um, and I could potentially add more things in there if I want. Uh, um, the other thing here, you know, that's already connected to my. I'm changing my connection here. So if I want to authenticate here. So I can sign in here. So that's done the OAuth bit for me now. And now this Logic app knows my OAuth connection. It'll handle all the refresh. It'll handle all that for me. So I don't ever need to come back and re-authenticate this Logic app. It now is connected to that. All in one go. So again, something you wouldn't really wouldn't want to write the code for yourself is all done for me there. So, so that that is now ready. If I save that, that will now watch that RSS feed for me. And when whenever there's a new question comes into Stack Overflow, I will get an email about me. And I and I literally do have you know something that runs and does that sort of thing for me for my favorite Stack Overflow items. So you can see there in you know in less than five minutes. I can set that up. Um, I can say that. And, you know, that will now start emailing me anytime somebody puts a logic app question <laughs> to overflow. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, I can show you if you want just a couple of other ones I've already made. You know, just so you can see a little bit more about what a, a more fully featured oh, oh, look like. Okay, maybe just one more then. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just just a simple one here. Okay. This is this is the one. This is the watcher one I was telling you about. So, this is the one that watches web pages. So this is quite a simple one. This just watches every thirty minutes. I've defined here some text I want to look for in a particular URL, having posted that. Okay. And those are just two variable decorations, like you would in code. And then just for each thing in that list of pages to check. It will go in through and either send a post or a get, depending on what's in there. So it will then you know, call, you know, fetch that web page, check to see whether my text is in that output, and then either send a found email or check whether there was a problem and tell me if there was a problem with that page. So you know, that, that's just a slightly more yes, rounded more. example of the sort of thing you can do with Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Mark. Code uh, view there. So, you know, if you're a developer, you do like this all in 
Uh, I, I can. As well. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you able to hear me now? Uh, yes, I, I can hear oh, you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Th th thank you very much. So I wasn't sure um, uh, if you were true with the demo or if you were still trying to show. I think you, you showed yeah, the I, second. I was, yeah, all, all I was showing there is that there is a code view behind that. So if you're a developer and you want to do a reproducible deployment of that or actually edit it at the code level, you can do okay. that. So you don't have to do everything through the graphical designer. Okay, okay, okay. So so I also want to ask that uh, for those listening right now uh, or those that will be watching uh, this uh, video at a later time since uh, we, we couldn't make it live today, yeah. w w what is your advice uh, for them on how uh, they can learn this technology and how they can start uh, to put Logic Hub to use? Um, well, the first answer to, the, to the, how do I learn anything in Microsoft is always go to Microsoft Learn. There is so much good stuff on Microsoft Learn. Um, so yeah, there, there's, there's stuff in there. And obviously docs.microsoft.com, there's, you know, if you just go to the Logic Apps documentation, that's all set up with tutorials and examples and explanations of how things work. But I mean, to be honest, I mean, Logic Apps, like you can see, is, is is so simple to use that you know, if you have an idea, you know, really all you need to do is to create a Logic App, do what you need to do, and you know, it, it's the sort of thing you can literally pick up just by doing it almost. So you know, if you're, if, as long as you you know, you're not, you know, as long as you feel semi brave, you know, just go in there, stop clicking on things, and you you you'll, you'll be able to build something. <laughs> Very well then. Uh, thank you so much again, uh, McAllen, for coming on the show uh, with me today to share your knowledge and your time with us. Uh, I don't know, any last words from you before we, we say bye bye? Um, I would, you know, I would just say on the Logic App side, you know, do watch this space. Um, they are working a lot on improving the developer experience, certainly, and they're starting to build out a lot of other things around it. So I think you'll see the whole integration and serverless space start to really come together and move forward soon. So, you know, if if that didn't look good to you, and I don't know why not, but if that didn't look good to you, still keep an eye on it. It's going to get even better. <laughs> better. Yeah, so, so so you've heard it uh, from Alan, from Mark Alan. So it's really uh, a privilege uh, to have you on the show with us uh, today. So it's a wrap on today's episode of the Tech Talk Wednesday with me, Kazim. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, the show today. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to the YouTube channel, please do. Uh, so when you do subscribe, uh, so anytime there's a new video up on the page, on the channel so you you get an alert uh so please do it is a tech talk wednesday with kazim on youtube so until next week it's bye bye from me and mark thank you so much mark and thanks for having me it's been great thank, thank you, you. Thank bye. you. Yeah. bye bye bye